All right, hi everyone. I'm so excited to be starting off JSConf AU by talking to you about how to use Chrome developer tools to hack your way into concerts. Now the subtitle of this talk is, please don't actually use this information. Uh, I'm not here to tell you to do anything that's literally illegal or to break any user agreements. We're here for the education. And so do as I say and not as I am still saying. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna tell you about a story. This all really did happen to me last year. I was really excited about Taylor Swift. I wanted to get tickets to her concert. And I learned so much about web development on the way uh, to doing that. I built us a small web app for the purpose of th this talk, and it will be recreating the kinds of um, interactions that I saw when I was investigating her website. Um, so we have this web website called Swifties. It's selling tickets to Taylor Swift's concert, and they want to give tickets to the, the most dedicated fans of Taylor Swift, and they're measuring your dedication by how many times you've watched her music video. So the more you've watched her music video, the more you will have priority in line at the end. Um, so, no, seriously. Um, so we want to convince Swifties that we've watched the music video more times than we really have. You know, it's like four minutes long. It's also, also not, look what you made me do was not like the greatest music video, to be honest. Like, I'm sorry, but I really hope Taylor Swift isn't watching. So, so it's based on a true story. This is the, what we're going to be doing for the next 30 minutes. Um, I, wrote, I wrote this slide before I realized that I actually cannot see you all very much. But we will be using the browser a lot in this talk. I've tried to make the font as big as possible. If you can't see, please like, do just call out. Um, I don't want to you know, miss the content just because you can't see. We can make the font bigger. Um, if someone near you is straining and they're too shy, you know, just call out for them. Uh, I will not be mad. So we've got Swifties here. It's a very pared down website. I also realized that Taylor Swift is a lot more cool than I am, so I swapped out the music video for a timer so that you could all <laughs> pay attention to the talk, but you know, it will work even if you replace it with a four minute video. And I just realized it says one view, it should say zero views, that's fine. Starting the live demo off, great. <laughs> so, we can play the video. The Wi-Fi works, oh my god. That's, that, that's like the biggest hurdle here. So you know, we got this video, we watched the whole thing, this is the only time I'm gonna watch the whole video and I couldn't think of any funny jokes to tell during this time, but eventually it'll end and I can stop being awkward. Yeah, so we have two, two views now. And so we just want to get that number as big as possible. So the first thing I started thinking when I was uh, debugging this website was like, how do I just make this video faster? I know that I can come over here and um, click on speed and click it to two and that would make the video faster, but what if I want to do that programmatically so that every time I watch the video, um, the video comes out faster? And through a little bit of research, I found out that there's the YouTube iframe player API, which is pretty great. Um, it turns out you can send a ton of different pieces of information to, you, to a video that's embedded through YouTube. And the point here is that you can, you can send code, you can examine uh, things through the elements um, tab, and so that, now we're actually gonna get to the Chrome part. So, in case you didn't know, it turns out this is called a kebab menu. That's what I learned really recently. Or maybe a, like a skewer menu or a meatball menu, I'm not sure. So, you can find more tools, developer tools. I usually hit command option I, but that's where you would find it. Um, and you can paste in this code that I found on Stack Overflow. Uh, <laughs> um, no, seriously, I, 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 um, it, it's a JSON. It's, it's a command, it sets the playback rate to two. You um, send the message, you post it to the iframe player. And I, I know you're all probably thinking like, yeah, I've done this before, it's fine. Um, you come over here, you paste in your code, and you play this video. Actually, let's refresh this page because it's already played. And now suddenly this video, at least I hope you can tell that it's like moving faster than one second at a time. Um, one thing that's important to note here is that you can see that this is actually searching for a element that has the ID of player. And if you wanted to make sure that that was working, you could come over here and see, indeed, that there's an iframe here with the ID of player. One thing that I really love doing is if you hit Command-Shift-C, I realize you can't see my hands, but hit Command-Shift-C and you can um, highlight over any of these elements and then select it from there. So that's really cool. You, know, you can make videos play faster. If you do this with Taylor Swift's videos, she sounds like a chipmunk. But 
that's not good enough. We, you know, we want to convince it we're, that we're watching it like hundreds of times, and so we don't want to paste that code in every time. And so can we figure out how the site is communicating with the server? Um, in this case, I was like being silly and like going, ha, 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 I can like go over to this three and like maybe I can edit this text. I can like go over here and go like, yes, I've watched it like a bajillion times. I'm great. Uh, but you know, you refresh the page, of course you know that the views are not there. Um, and so there must be some sort of communication that's happening. And that's what the network tab is for. You can, you can come over here and you can actually watch everything that's happening. So if we refresh this page, start over, we can see a ton of different things happening. We're watching all these scripts go through, the video's happening, and so you might be thinking, like, this is really complicated. But it turns out that you can, um, you can actually filter by domain. You know that um, Swifties is probably not sending a request to YouTube.com in order to track a view. And so you can actually type here, domain. Um, and in this case, we can see, actually, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the domain is uh, my local host, 127.0.0.1. And so that actually filters out and takes away all of that YouTube, all of that double click, and all that other stuff. Next, um, we know that there's like, some animations apparently going on, and some like left pad. Um, so we know that we've, we don't really care about all of this stuff. So we've got some, we know that we have XHR here. And what's funny is that I, if someone asked me, like, what does XHR mean, I could say, like, oh, well, it stands for XML HTTP request. And if they asked me anything else, I'd be like, Ajax? I don't know. Um, and that's, honestly, I, I feel like I've gone pretty far in life with just that knowledge. So anyway. <laughs> You, you can click here for XHR. Um, and that, that's really great, because now you can filter out all of this JS. You can ignore it. You, if you want to look at the CSS, you can actually filter out your network requests. So we've gone down to two network requests from out of, like, let's say, 49 requests. Um, so that's one really easy way to like, filter out and like, drill down to like, the information that's really relevant here. And so now we can see that there actually is a count request that's happening, so maybe we can investigate that. So uh, from here, we can click on this. We can read through like, what's happening. There's some request headers, our user agent string. And there's this interesting ID here that like, looks randomly generated, so maybe we care about that. We kind of store all this information away in case it comes up in the future. Um, and then we can see that the response from the server is that there's a, a true successful response. I just realized I haven't been checking in to see if people are seeing the screen. So I'll keep moving. All right. So we opened the network tab. We filtered. Oh, and also, I'm glad I have the slides, because it reminds me of all the great things I want to talk about. Um, so we come here to the initiator column. And this is really cool. I may have just found out about this yesterday, so that's really great. Uh, you can go here and see what stack trace led to this count endpoint happening. So if I go here, I can see if there's a, some sort of VM stuff. I heard that's the next talk, so that's, I'm excited for the next one. We can learn what's going on here, but we can pretend that that doesn't exist for now. There's record view and update view count. Um, and if I click here, I can see a bunch of stuff going on. I can also see that there is some code here that's like checking for the current time versus the duration of the video. So I can see maybe like 60% of the way through this video is when we record that the user has viewed the video. So that's kind of interesting. We can like even test out that assumption. Let's refresh this page. And if I skip all the way to the end, I'm at five views. And now I'm at six views. So I've already like learned a little bit just by checking out the code um, inside of here. And so we looked at the response and request data. And I was really afraid that none of this would work. So I took a ton of screenshots in case I had to like go back to the slides. So that's everything we just saw. So now we've seen that there's a count request. And maybe if we send that count request over and over again, we might be able to get some more of these views. So you come back over here. Uh, let's play this video. And there's the count endpoint. One thing that's really great you can do is click here, replay XHR. Um, and that will just re redo this request again. So now you can see that there is no initiator column because I initiated it from the menu. And you can see that the uh, ID here is the same ID as before. This is the original request, and this is the new request, but that the success is false. And so the server is telling us that it's not going to count this as a view. We can test this. If I refresh this page, 
Um, let's try replaying it a bunch of times. I should see m like 10 views, but when I refresh the page, I only get seven. So only the first request went through. So that's kind of mysterious. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, and so the next question might be like, well, there, you know, there's that unique ID. What does that mean? Like, can, does it have to be something different every single time? Um, and that's where curl comes in. Uh, curl is a command line tool that lets you make a get request and post request through HTTP and all the other methods. Um, one thing that I hate about curl is that I never, ever get the syntax right. Um, that there's all those headers, there's the new lines and all that, and it's just confusing. So one thing that's really great that you can do here is um, I found out about this. You can copy this exact request as a curl command, and then you don't have to do all that formatting yourself. So let's do some curl. And now I, I can see I have all these headers. Um, I have my data. And if I go here and I say something like hello jsconf, that's a unique ID. Maybe it hasn't been sent yet. Maybe that'll work. And so if I paste this in, no, it doesn't work. It's still false. Uh, it was worth a shot, though. I remember I had practiced this talk recently, and someone was like, what if he just changed the ID? And so I wanted to confirm that the ID does matter. So we know there's something going on here. We want to get that ID, but we don't know where it is. So we want to send a valid request. So let's debug this. Um, we know that we can find the code from here, but what if we wanted to get to the code before it uh, actually runs, before that, that AJAX request happens. So I can come over to sources. I wasn't supposed to have that open. Um, and one thing that's really great is you, know, you can set your regular breakpoints just in, at, at lines of code, but you can actually break on, um, on AJAX requests before they happen. You can break any time a, a request happens, and it turns out YouTube is constantly making XHR requests, and so it's actually not that useful. So we'll delete that one. But we can break any time the count happens. And that will say any time any URL contains the word count, we'll just stop. So let's refresh the page. And there it is. Um, we know that now that we're in this weird VM code that we can ignore. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And when we look through the stack trace, we can kind of be careful and say, OK, well, there's the record view. We know we are updating the view count. But there's an ID there. Um, and so we can see that there's a variable somewhere. Uh, we know it's like somewhere in our uh, scope, if I can see the scope. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's on the right. Um, thank you. Thanks, Chrome. Um, so the scope is somewhere in here for the, the ID. It's a global variable. Um, indeed. And at this point, I may have just command F for the word ID and realize it was at the top of this file. Um, which is pretty interesting. Let's see. I'm trying to make this f f a little bit bigger for you all. So if I refresh this page a bunch of times, I can see that this ID keeps changing. And so what, what you can do is you can come over here to the network, click on counters, and you can see that, indeed, this response is coming through every time. Every time I load the page, I get a new counter. And so at that point, you know, you, you know that you can, you can definitely download this file and parse out that ID using a regular expression, uh, which I will gloss over for now. So this ID here, what happens if I copy it? If I steal it and I put it inside my curl request, maybe I am done, which <laughs> maybe I'm done now is the uh, kind of overall theme of this talk. <laughs> so I put that new ID in, I paste it, and I'm like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, it's just like so disappointing, I feel like soul crushing. But um, now I know at least that there's an ID that I can get, but there's something we're missing clearly. Um, and at this point, I will say this whole thing, I know I'm like squeezing into like 30 minutes, but it actually did take me like a couple of days. Like I got really frustrated. I put it away, I talked to some friends for a couple, and I just keep coming back to it. Um, and eventually, like, after trying so many different things, I realized that um, there was something going on with this, uh, with this start endpoint. And I'm, I'm pretty much, uh, oops, let's restart this. I realized that it was false. So 
I noticed that there was a start endpoint, and it was giving the same sh like s style of response as the count endpoint. Um, and I also noticed that, oh, that breakpoint is here. So let's press play, so we're back in here. And I noticed that the start endpoint has an ID in it, and so there, it, must be, it must be connecting it back to the count somehow. And so honestly, I don't have a good like intuition for like, how this happened, but I just decided that maybe I should try running the start command and then I should try running the count command. I did try like a dozen other things, but I will give you the answer because we're only here for half an hour. Um, so I have this, this curl command. I'm gonna paste out my, this is the start endpoint. You can see it right here. And I'm gonna try refreshing this page so I can get a new fresh ID. I can go over to sources. Here it is. And I'm going to paste it right here and also right here. So I've got this start and terminal. OK, so that one was true. That's good. Um, what if I come over here and try the count? And it's true. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I realized that, that the uh, climax is just kind of like, you try a lot of things, you uh, debug a lot, you read through all of the code that you can find that isn't minified, um, and you eventually figure out what's going on with the site. And then the next question is, you know, can we automate the solution? We know that we got a unique ID, we send a request to the start endpoint, we send a request to the count endpoint, and if we repeat this, hopefully we should uh, be able to get more and more views. Um, I'm gonna do that thing that Martha Stewart does where you know, she has her like, oven where she makes her turkey and then she puts it in and she walks to her second oven and suddenly there's another turkey and I've never had two ovens in my life. <laughs> Sometimes I've had like one, I've had like zero ovens before. But I have this great thing called turkey.py. <laughs> um, so we're gonna send a request, we're just using the Python request endpoint. We have this regular expression that just literally searches for a string var id equals such and such thing. And we're going to get the counters endpoint. We're going to then post to the start endpoint with the token that we parsed out. Then we're going to post to the count endpoint. And hopefully, we'll see a bunch of successes. So come on. Yes. OK, so we, did, we just manually or automatically did all the things that we were manually doing with curl. And if I come back over to the browser and I refresh this page, now I have 100 views. <laughs> so I can like run this again and again. Um, I'm so glad I'm on the local host, because that would not have worked over the internet. Um, shout out to conference Wi-Fi. So now I have like 200 views. I can keep running that again. I can even change it to like 1,000. But you get the idea. Now I, I've actually proven that I am the greatest Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> I have more views than anyone. I have more views than it's like physically possible to watch in one day. So that's all great. So the last question you might be asking is, how do we prevent this from happening? You know, we're all web developers here. We know that we, we don't want people like us to be playing with our websites. <laughs> um, and so the first, like, I think, most uh, easy thing to do is like, run a CAPTCHA. Like, every time you watch a video or every time you submit a form, like say you want to stop someone from automatically uh, uh, buying your stuff, you can make them fill out a CAPTCHA. One thing that is a problem in this case is that you don't want to make users fill out a CAPTCHA like, every time they play a music video. Um, that would be really annoying. You'd lose all your real fans. Um, so you know, there's pros and cons. So you want to be thoughtful about when you would use a CAPTCHA. Another thing you could do is randomize the DOM. I thought this was a really clever idea. You could, um, you know, we we all of this just hinged on the idea that we could get the ID out of the uh, out of the files that we were downloading, and that it was always in the same place. It was always var ID equals string. Uh, if you changed out the variable names or randomized them, or if you even like dynamically generated those IDs, maybe by concatenating strings together, um, all of that would stop someone from just regular expression, expressioning out the IDs. A really uh, <laughs> tricky idea that mom and coworkers gave me was that if you're, let's say you're, you have a form where people are buying uh, something rare, like a special T-shirt or something, you could have a hidden buy button inside of the DOM that isn't showing to a user. So that it, and you can randomize which button comes first, so that if someone's trying to like, traverse the DOM in order to find a button, then they would sometimes hit the wrong button. And that's how you'd know if they were botting or scripting. I think the easiest, or the, 
the simplest thing you can do actually is not to stop bots from accessing your website, but to let them in and validate what kinds of behavior you're seeing. And I know that Melbourne is really, really um, familiar with this because I learned that there, it takes about 10 hours to drive from Melbourne to Sydney, but if you speed, there, <laughs> you can get there in six hours. And I was like, well, why not just do it? Just, just speed through for six hours. And my friend says that, told me that you, they'll take a picture of you at one point during this long drive, and then at the end, they'll take another picture of you, and they'll compare those timestamps and say, like, there's no way you could have made it there in the right time. And so they'll, um, that's how they'll catch you for speeding. So you can do the same thing. There was no way I could have watched 200, uh, this video 200 times in so many uh, minutes. And so if you detect that, you can just flag the accounts that are doing bad things. One thing that's really important to do with this is to not alert the person who uh, you believe is botting. You can just keep sending them success equals true. Um, <laughs> you can just keep telling them that they're doing great. If they're scraping your website, you can start sending them like vaguely true but also not real data. Um, and you know, the benefit here is that you're, you're not tipping them off. You're uh, letting them keep thinking that their solution is working. And at the end, you, know, you don't have to sell them tickets. And so those are just some like, starting points for how you'd figure out how to stop people from doing this. Um, if you can make it so that someone can't just keep sending posts and gets in order to get to your website, um, that's probably enough to, to deter the uh, most, the, I guess, most, anyone but the most dedicated fans. So what happened in the end with me? Well, I didn't get shadow banned. I actually was really afraid of that. I, I thought, like, I put in all this work, and on the day of, I thought I would just, like, sit, get an email saying, you don't get tickets. But they didn't, uh, somehow they didn't realize that I was watching this video way more times than I could have. Um, I did get a high priority position in the sale. The sad part is, these tickets cost money. <laughs> it costs, like, $1,500 to sit at the front at this concert, and I was, like, not, like, at all prepared to do that. So, <laughs> I put in all this work, I spent all these hours doing this, and then realized that I didn't want those tickets after all. <laughs> but I did get like the cheaper tickets, like you know, kind of in the back. I'll, maybe I'll see her like from far away. I'll like, bring my binoculars. Um, I got offered a job, so that was great. <laughs> um, what's really great is that it was an internship, and I kind of wanted to be like, what makes you think I don't have a job, man? <laughs> Is it the Taylor Swift? I don't know. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I just like project that I have too much time on my hands. Um, and I got to give this talk, so that's really great. Uh, I'm really glad I got to come to Australia and talk to you all about Chrome Developer Tools. So, just to sum up, we asked a ton of questions during this talk. We were thinking about, like, can we watch the video faster? How, how are we communicating? What's going on with the network tab? How do we do this again? How do we make it repeatable? How do we find these tokens? We were doing all this debugging, and we wrote some scripts. And so that's a lot of really big questions. I realize that's like kind of hard to remember. But I think the thing that you can walk away from this with is like, first of all, you got all those like concrete skills. You know, hopefully you've learned something or at least one thing about Chrome developer tools that you didn't know. But the more important thing is, you know, there's a spirit of debugging where you're filtering out the information that doesn't matter. You're, you're figuring out which path to go down. And you're also per persevering. Like, even if it takes hours, you know, it's OK. You can try things over and over again. Um, and you can keep asking questions. And so what I really want to say here is you know, be curious. Uh, if, you, if you want something to happen and it's happening in the browser, you pr certainly have the tools and the Stack Overflow to make it happen. Um, yeah. So thank you. Here's all of the information. <laughs>